Um, so I hope you can see my screen. Yes. yes. Okay. Hi, uh, so I'm Amrita. I'm from the PYG group, as you all know, and I'm a junior software engineer here. So I'll be uh, giving you a very brief introduction to fast API, elastic search and open search. Um, so to start off with, we can talk about a little bit about what fast API is. It's a, a web development framework. It's a high perform. It's supposed to be a high performance and modern framework. The reason it's called modern is because it's very readable. It's very easy to use. Um, it's also very user friendly, as in you can pretty much read through the code, read through the documentation, and immediately understand what to do. You can start it up pretty fast. Um, it's much more lightweight than something like Django. So the documentation can be found at, also it's open source, um, as you have guessed. Uh, the source code is available uh, here, and the documentation is available here. Um, as I pointed out, a couple of very good features of fast API is one of it is it is very fast. <laughs> um, it's also really easy and beginner friendly. Like I said, uh, it's easy to uh, it's easy to read through the code and understand what um, needs to be done. Um, it's very close to how you would how you would write something if you were talking in English. Um, it also has very good documentation. Um, very extensive documentation. Um, it has almost all the information you need to do secure to handle security, um, to use fast API, to integrate fast API with something else. Like uh, how do you in integrate fast API with PyTest, or how do you integrate fast API with uh, what we will talk about next, Open Search or Elastic Search. Um, also, it has a really great community. There's a lot of people who use fast API, so you can uh, the Stack Overflow community is nice. Um, so that's what fast API is. Coming to Elastic Search, so there is something called Elastic Stack. So Elastic Stack is a group of open search products from this uh, organization called Elastic. So you can take data of uh, from a lot of sources. You can take them in many formats. You can give it an image. You can give it a um, vid, uh, snapshots from a video. You can give it unstructured data. You can give it structured data. And you can search the data, analyze the data, visualize it in real time. So it provides you with a dashboard. It provides you with analytics that will show you something like it, it, you can make graphs out, out of it. Um, also, if you're pinging me on chat, I can't see it because my uh, screen is full screen. So if you want to comment, please unmute and uh, let me know. Yeah, so Elastic Search is the search and analytics part of it. So there's two or three parts of Elastic Stack. One is Elastic Search. Um, the dashboard that I was talking about is known as Kibana. So it's also there. There's something called Beats. So there's a bunch of stuff. The main website is West. Uh, also, this is completely open search, uh, open source. Um, it used to be under the Apache 2.0 license. Um, OK, are you messaging? Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, sorry. It used to be under the Apache 2.0 license, which is the least restrictive license that is available right now. Uh, but no, it's no longer under that license. I'll talk about why. So anyway, you have the source uh, main website at Elastic.co. You have the source code here. And for specifically the Python client of Elasticsearch, so Elasticsearch is available in a bunch of languages. It's available in Java. It's available on, I think, Ruby on Rails. It's available on Python. So for the Python client, you can um, go here and read the docs. It also has a very good extensive documentation. Um, it almost has around 336 APIs, if I'm not wrong. And it has extensive documentation on almost all of the on almost all of those APIs. Okay, now coming to open search. Um, 
it's also a search and analytics engine which is at the heart of something called open distro um so let me go into a little bit of background about what is so different between open search and elastic search as you can see um i uh, as i mentioned so open search is a fork of elastic search and kibana so what happened was um elastic search could be purchased as a service from aws even though open uh, elastic search was free but since the uh, uh, since il, um, elastic stack which is elk elastic stack was licensed under apache 2.0 amazon could legally sell um elastic stack to their users even though it was actually free um so that was one thing amazon did another complaint elastic had against amazon was they weren't contributing enough to the code base even though they were selling elastic stack and also um and basically due to this um, elastic elastic removed elastic search ela the entire elastic stack from under 2.0 uh, the two, uh, Apache 2.0 license. So as a response to that, uh, Amazon started um, selling a predated version of Elasticsearch and Kibana bundled together as Open Search. So Open Search uh, is built on top of Elasticsearch, and it's a particular version of Elasticsearch. It's basically Elasticsearch 7.10.2, because right after that, um, Elastic withdrew their uh, products from under the 2.0 license um so there is not a lot of difference right now between open search and elastic search open search basically just uses uh, names like open search so where elastic search would use something like insert document for creating a document open search would say create document so on um, but going forward as both open search open search is now under the uh, maintained by the open search community Going forward, we might see more changes, but for now, um, we are pretty much, it's pretty much the same. So as users, if we are okay with using Elasticsearch 7.10, it doesn't make really a, make a difference for us whether we are using OpenSearch or Elasticsearch. Um, but going forward, we will probably face more differences and difficulties. Um, so that's the basic introduction. Even though the session is titled Fast API with Elasticsearch, what I will show you today is an implementation of Open Search rather than Elasticsearch because I'm more familiar with Open Search. Again, I've, I've also created uh, just a dummy file to illustrate some differences between Elasticsearch and Open Search. So I'll show you those as well. So, yeah, let's just look at some code. So I have used Docker to set it, uh, set my project up. Uh, this just makes things faster and easier for me. Um, this is a Docker file. Um, this Docker file basically tells the do Docker container. So a container is like a virtual machine. It's not exactly a virtual machine, but it is somewhat like a virtual machine. We can talk about that later. Uh, anyway, the basic idea of this uh, Docker file is that it uh, uses Python 3.10. This is a version of Python. Um, this is to this line basically ensures that if we use a sudo command, so we are using Amazon Linux for this uh, for this cluster. So using Linux. So any of the problems we can encounter while using sudo should uh, will not happen. Our working directory is code. Our environment is production. Um, so uh, these are this is how you will um, give Linux commands or Python commands in your Docker file. So here I have pip install upgrade pip, then I have pip install in uh, install my requirements, all the files that are listed in the requirements. Run sh is just a small script to we have to run fast API. I'll come to that later, so on and so forth. Um, so this is sorry yeah this is docker compose dot yml which is a yaml file which it's known as a yaml file which docker reads to build the container so if you look at it um 
my container is known as fast api demo it will use docker file uh, docker file to build itself the container name is going to be fast api demo it's going to depend on another container which is known as open search node it will be available accessible to us at port 8000 the volume it is stored on is this one and these are some of the environment variables that we need so we have the elastic cache host open search node admin admin project name project description and so on okay so this is how you can set up a open search container or an elastic search container depending on which one you are using so the image is hosted here open search project slash open search in case in case of elastic search it, i think it will be something like elastic search uh distro slash elastic search something like that latest is the tag so this is this part is the tag here you can uh, specify a particular version or you can use the tag latest in which case it will download the latest stable version my container name is going to be this so here you see i have cluster names and so on this is running on my local machine so my cluster is basically just one machine which is my machine so it's a cluster with a single instance um anyway so we have these things um by the way both the docker compose.yaml file and the docker file are available on the elasticsearch website i can send a link to all uh, on the python group for your reference okay now let's go on to um our fast api part so this is where the, so this part is the docker setup please ignore these two um these things this is not very important. This is my requirement.txt file where I have set up um, um, what all th packages I need. So I have fast API, I have Unic UVCorn, I have GUnicorn, Pydantic. Open search that Py is the open search Python client. Request UIID. If you're going to use Elasticsearch, you should put Elasticsearch dash Py here. Okay, so this is my app where my fast api app so let's go into this you have a git ignore part just we can ignore that uh, for the time being this is my config file so what config does uh, so you saw how we have we have um where, where is it yeah we have the environment variables right so if i want to run my fast api app on my local machine without a container um, my variables would be stored here, which is the config file. So you can choose not to do this. This is just um, easier to edit, easier to keep track of your variables. If you are using a very big app, you will have a lot of variables. So just makes life simpler. So you have um, what is going to be the URL for this app, the local uh, you have a secret key this is not this is for the security handling part we are not we have not done, put any sort of security for this demo app so not very important project name demo app uh, fast api uh, you can give a project description demo for fast api in elastic search uh, you can write your version um this is so the 920 uh, part is where the open search container is running our thing is going to run at 8000 and we also have a dashboard where we can visualize the data called open search dashboard that is going to run at 5601 so you can specify your ports um that's fine okay let's go into how to initialize uh, elastic search okay so i have brought in settings here because i wanted to all the variables that i need all the variable values that I need, I have encoded them in here in config. So class settings and then settings equal to settings. So I have initialized my class here and then called that, right? So for authentication, I have set setting.elastic cache username, setting.elastic cache password. So if we go back here, this is what we have for our elastic um yeah elastic cache password uh a username elastic cache password okay 
this, this is how you uh, give it a username and password. So you can specify what username and what password you will allow in the config file. Here I've just given it as, and then you initialize the open search client. So this is the function that initializes the open search client. Um, this is where you import it from open search by input open search. And then you give it the host parameter, elastic cache host, which um, and which port it's going to open at. Um, these are different parameters. Um, whether it will verify your certificates, whether it will use a um, SSL certificate, um, will it show a warning? Uh, what is the connection class, etc.? It's going to print all of that out every time I request. So it's just good for debugging or just seeing if there's any sorts of errors that are coming in in the connection part. Um, and return client. So this is my get client function. This is how you would initialize a initialize the client to start off. Amrita, just yes. one question. Yeah. Uh, these settings in uh, config files are all were creating manually, or there is some init command which which is creating the whole project, something like no, that. No, no, no. This is I created this manually. So okay. you have to create the client and the config files manually, unfortunately. Um, the setup of uh, app, I think there might you might be able to create it uh, with all the hierarchies. Uh, with a single command, but for Elasticsearch, initializing the Elasticsearch client, making the config file, etc., etc., sorry, etc., etc., all of that you have to do manually. Okay. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, this is how you set up the client. So, now the client is set up, your connections are set up. Now we are going to go to search, uh, search sort by. I named it search sort by just because. Um, so what, what we are doing here is importing the elastic cache client where which we had made here, which is basically what initializes the client. And then <clears throat> we create another class for search. In the search, we have the first part we have, we just get the client. We get the client, name it as client. And then so create document, also known as indexing documents. Um, we define a function called that. And inside client, you already have a helper function. This is a helper uh, Python function in the open search pi module. It's called index. So in index, when you call index, it creates a document. The parameters that you have to pass is index name. What is the name of the index under which you are creating the document? The body is basically the document structure. I'll show you the document structure as well. This ID, um, you can, you can, I have passed it here. You will see when I um, show you the endpoint, I've passed it as an UID for thing. Refresh equal to true. Delete document client dot delete client dot update. So it's pretty simple. So it's very, uh, as I said, again, open search is also quite user friendly. This is all you need to do to create update delete. Okay, now let's go to the fast API part. Mm -hmm. So, um, here we have the endpoints. Okay, so I'll just show you the imports as well. So, achha, so you can do this two ways. Okay, either you can say app. So it, you can write something like this, app equal to fast API, uh, API router. Uh, app equal to fast API router, in which case, so there's a difference, the difference is this. So let's say you might have different classes of endpoints. Maybe you have something like a curd op operation. So these are the curd operations. Maybe you have something like search operations. And then maybe you have something like full text search. You might have something like KNN search, things like that. In that case, you will have different files for different um, endpoints rather than keeping it in the same file, just for clarity. So if you have a if you don't have a lot of endpoints, you can create them in a single file, 
call the app 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 right here saying app equal to api oh, by the way app is a special name in fast api so we i mean i'm not entirely sure if it's a special name or it's just very strictly followed convention but either way um it is quite strictly followed if you um, if you do not want to keep all your endpoints in the same file what you should do is basically you should define a variable i have defined it as router you can probably define it as something else router equal to api dot router and this is the decorator which um fast api decorator which uh, under which you will create the function that the endpoint is going to call so in my content um content endpoint i have defined an, a function called create document where i pass the index name okay another thing you can see here is content text body 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 is a function of fast api itself in which you can um it extracts the body of the request and text content is a pydantic model that i have made uh, this is just because um i prefer doing it this way you can also just write something you can also just basically separate it out, out and write it just like content string content url string something like that um i have defined it as a pydantic class and put content and content url under it and then called it here um and what i have specified is that the content will be of type text content and it will be extracted from the body of the request my index resource a variable of the index resource type it depends on index resource this class so fast api also has something called dependency injections um basically you can create a class and then make the uh, make a variable depend on that class and this is what has been done here and then you create the document structure the document structure has been created like this because what you are going to actually pass is a json document um so it's been has been created like this and then you say uh, this is just a variable then you say index.resource.search create document so if you remember if you if you we can trace back the hierarchy of this function so we have search here so search and Amrita, search. Uh, sorry for interrupting yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. the, so the in the dependency that is the index resource mm -hmm. that is the client class that you defined and you're basically getting yeah. the dependency of it right yeah exactly and, That's the, what and, the, and the response model and the response model you defined it is uh, a schema that you defined somewhere else right yeah yeah so i have defined the schema in um, this file it's also a pydantic based model as message got and it, response it. yeah okay um yeah so as shantanu was pointing out so we have search which we get from this function and if you remember we had defined a class called search here which is what we are getting we are initializing the search this is the function that we are calling search dot create document that is the function that we are calling um and then we are passing index name document this part this part and id as uiid dot uiid4 okay and we are returning what is uh, if it's a successful response we get uh, 201 if it's not we will get um, i think 500 or 404 okay so delete again follows the same um paradigm this is where you put the app uh, put the fast api decorator after that you define your python function that the endpoint is going to call and then and you new have update document um anything else i have used let me just quickly check yeah so this is the py, uh, text content is my uh, pydantic base model you can you can um use whatever model suits you so this is the model i am using if you need something like cars you can say car string car number float car price float um this is just for convenience and uh, structure so this is just a design choice i made 
okay the other thing that i wanted to show this is a dummy file this is has not been written by me um i pulled it off git uh, somebody's thing in github but this is how elastic search works we had see we have seen how open search works this is how you would define something for elastic search as you can see it's very very similar this is here also you call the function elastic search define the host define the port um as you remember uh, where is the client yeah as you remember we had done the same thing we had given it more parameters in this one we didn't give it so many parameters but it's basically the same thing um here again as you can see the function is also the same it's just index index name document type document id body document almost the same thing so till version 7.10.1 elastic search and open search practically do not have any differences okay now uh, an interesting question that can come up is how do you what is this index and how do you make it okay so let me show you something let me uh, run the app so my virtual environment is already configured i have already built the things in anticipation i'll just uh, start it up so these are my containers that are being created uh, let me show you okay yeah so these are my containers that were created so i have this is the network on which this is the server basically and these are the three containers one is open search dot node open search node open search dashboard this is this is what we are going to use for visualizing visualizing and this is what is actually going to execute our fast api code okay so as you can see we have responses from each of the containers this is how the containers um, are showing you their console logs so here we have our fast api logs right here so you can see it started starting unicorn uh, so it started listening at this port starting booting the worker started server process waiting for application startup application startup complete okay that's fine and also if we go down this is where if you see open search dashboard type log timestamp tags info http server open search dashboard prd1 this is where our our visualization server is running in this um, thing so let me start my uh, uh, so i'm using firefox for that let me show you how it looks this is my visualization part as i as if you remember i had set the uh, um, password and the um, username as admin admin so that's what i'm going to put in here if i had put in something like learning mate learning mate you would put in learning mate learning mate here Okay, this so this is how your open search dashboard looks. Um, by the way, open search is as I think I mentioned this. It's um, managed by Amazon. Uh, it does give you some nifty tools and stuff which Elasticsearch doesn't give you. But um, yeah, this is your open search dashboard. This is where you're going to look at your data. It's called Discover. I have put in some data when I was testing out this uh, API. This is how it looks. This is how it will look. I'm going to recreate the index and show you how to create the index. So don't worry about that. Okay. So um, how would you create the index? One up option is you program programmatically create it from your app. You can write a script. You can um, create a JSON document, then call that JSON document, run it, make the index. Otherwise. You can go to your open search dashboard, go to management, go to dev tools. So dev tools is, so I, if you remember, I mentioned something called Kibana. So Kibana is the console part of Elasticsearch. Uh, Kibana uses a particular um, sort of, uh, it's called, it, it's called um, Elastic DSL. We are also using Elastic DSL even in open search. Um, it's 
it's a pretty easy sq it looks like sql for the most part uh, it looks a little bit like curl and sql mixed up so this is how you make an index so let me just delete the index that i already have made so you could say delete then demo index which is the index i have made already hmm. and you should get something like acknowledge true here is the status code this is the time it took for the um, response to be generated okay now if you want to make the index how do we make the index so the first part is you put a put and then you say slash and then your index name i've called it demo index you can call it my index you can call it content index you can call it text index you can call it whatever you want so these are the settings if let me let me show you um, the index management api of elastic search so that might give you a good idea elastic search index yeah so this is a index one of the apis of elastic search it's called the index api one of the 360 uh, 336 um this is how you post a document uh, with an index and so basically index are like mongodb collections that you create yeah. and then you can enter yeah. documents in it right yeah so index is like uh, a box and your documents are like the cards in the box something like that yeah um there is a part where it, it shows you all the different templates and etc of the index where is it no this is not that what does the shards shards signify the shards too shards are basically uh, how many portions the data is broken up into while it's getting stored so you can sh say shard equal to two, shard equal to three, shard equal to four. That is, that is internally managed by open search, right? Yeah, it's a, you, all you have to do is specify the number of shards. The breakup will be done by um, open search. So that is uh, something that happens in background for storing the data more efficiently. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. Storing the data more efficiently, retrieving the data more efficiently, searching the data more efficiently. All of the three things. Um, what I wanted to show you was that all the parameters of when you create an index, because it's very flexible. So that is one great part about this. It's very, very flexible. So you can specify a lot of stuff. Mm. So you have index management in Kibana. That I'll also show you. It should be here somewhere. There's a lot of stuff, so I <laughs> don't remember always what's there. So the Actually, database here. Uh, sorry, sorry. sorry yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So the database stored here can be stored in multiple clusters. Yeah, yeah. So if you have, so for example, the thing that I I'm working on, it has been deployed to AWS, right? So we are using a cluster, cluster with multiple instances. So here the cluster has only one instance, which is my machine. There it will may it has maybe I think ten part uh, ten instances. In that case, um, the data will be stored across multiple um, multiple machines and their memories. So it will function almost the same as a Hadoop system will. It will break up the data, store it, and then uh, retrieve it when you need it to retrieve it. So the shards basically optimize that process. But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Breaking up into two shards doesn't mean it's getting stored on only two machines. So we should not assume that it's uh, yeah. So we have all, yeah, so this is the part. We have all these um, things many many properties so we have mappings so mappings are important because mappings are what tells you what sort of mappings what is what tells elastic search what data what type of data are you storing are you storing a string are you storing text are you storing something like uh, uh email so uh, e so fields which are not which are not going to vary invariant fields 
um, or structured fields are known as keyword fields. So are you storing a keyword? Are you storing a text means just unstructured text? So uh, an excerpt from a book uh, or something like that. So here's an example. I'm not entirely sure what the replica part means. I've never used, I have never used it. Um, but yeah, so, so these are basic, basic examples. And look at this um, field type, field one. So name of the field, the field that you're going to keep, what is the type of the field and that type. So let us go back to dev tools. Look at, if you look at this, um, mappings, properties, my fields are content. The type is text because I want to type whatever I want. Content URL, keyword, key, uh, because emails are generally not going to change for a user. Matlab, not like that. What I mean is emails generally have a specified format. So it has something at the rate, the name, uh, the server name. So you'll store it as keyword. Created type date, updated type date. These are the things I'm going to store. So I have deleted this. So if I run it, run this thing again, it will say error, root cause, index not found, exception. So let me re remake the index. This is how you'll make an index. If you want more fields, you can give a comma and then put something here. If you want to change the settings, you can change it in the settings. If you want to add, if you want to change the type of index, so there are types of indexes. This is the default index. There's something called index.knn in which the data would be stored as a um, as a vectorized field. Why? Because you want to do a KNN search on it. So it stores the data in that form. Let me make the index. Yes. So you get this response. Acknowledge true. Shards acknowledge true. Index. The name is demo index. Now we can create our... Um, document this is called a swagger ui this is the um so fast api is also really nice because it gives you a ready-made front end it um it, and it's not very bad it's pretty nice actually uh it gives you a ready-made front end this is uh, uh hosted i think on swagger uh it has uh, two other things i think it's one is called re docs another thing i don't remember. I have only used this part, this one. So this is also really nifty when you're showing something. It's neat. It's um, looks good, user friendly. Okay. So create document. Let's create something. Let me copy paste something from here, just to show you. And I'm going to put in the URL. Okay. So this is my response, status 201. The messages document has been created. And this is the response from the open API, uh, open, sorry, open search API. Index ID the version version of the document result is created uh forced refresh true shards both of them have been uh i have uh, i had said uh use two shards didn't need to use two shards used only one shard and none of them have failed okay um now uh, let's refresh this yeah so this is how it will come on your dashboard comes in a quite a nice format so here is your id this is uh, this is the ui default thing that i had specified name of the index score comes in when you are doing a match query so that's when open search gives uh, open search or elastic search gives it a score uh, the scoring is determined on t with tf idf scoring so um 
here we haven't we just created the document hence the score is zero there's nothing to match we didn't specify the type of document so this is the content you have the content url and the date created i had specified date and this is the format open search takes it in let's update this so for updating you would need this id this is the id open search identify this is a unique primary key of the document so if you think about it in terms of uh, uh, databases this is the primary key that open search will store for the document document got updated um we have so so it, something interesting what open search does so it can if you see here so this is version one this is the first version of this of this i document with this id now if you see in this part this is version two this is because open search doesn't change this document this document remains as it is what open search does when you update it is it creates a new document with the same id and it marks the older document for delete that is done internally under the hood we can't see it do it but that's why the version is two so if i if i update it again see the version has become three because this is a third version of the documents and two versions have been marked for delete. So that's something interesting I thought I might mention. Then we can delete it, of course. So when I'm deleting it, the delete mark, so all those uh, which are marked uh, deleted, so those are deleted or like how it is deleted? Like it is uh, something similar to H3, how we do it in Something H3? similar to? H3 bucket. Something similar. I guess I, I I haven't worked with S3 bucket, so I'm not familiar with it. Um, but uh, what happens under the hood is basically open search removes it from its um uh accessible database, uh, accessible uh what would you say? Database is not the correct word. Um let's say accessible memory puts it in the temporary memory, says that these are marked for delete, and those get removed. Which, but this is actually a new document that has been created. It's not like the same document gets updated. So even though Can it's I, called an update function. Can yeah. specific version I want to do? Sorry, I couldn't doc. hear you. For, for uh -huh. the same document, I if, I, if I want to get some previous version, like, can I get that? No, you can't do that. You can't okay, do that. Okay. Hmm. So once it says version 3, means only that version exists in open search. But all the rest has been deleted. So you can't Body. retrieve. Let's say you have the 10th version. You can't retrieve the third version. It's already gone. So, yeah. Okay. It's, it's thank just... You, thank you. Uh, sort of letting, yeah, it's sort of letting you know that I have updated it to the 10th version but doesn't mean the ninth version is there <laughs> sadly so let me delete this yeah so we have delete got it gotten it deleted um and if you check it here it's gone It's gone. Nothing is under this index anymore. Um, yeah, so that's all I had um, to share with you. I can't find, <laughs> I can't find the Google. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, so that's all that I had to share with you. Um, yeah.
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच अमृता थैंक यू um let me know if you have any other questions like hit, uh, just ping me if you have any other questions i'm also quite new to fast api in elastic search so yeah it was very clear and concise thanks thank you yeah yeah thank you amrita thank you amrita thank you thank you thank you okay um uh, yeah priya told me to remind you to fill up the feedback form So, yeah thanks i'll drop now thank you bye thank you bye thank you bye thank you